I have always found the subject of neuroscience enchanting. When I was in the eighth grade, I attended a lecture by one of my peers about the Center for Brain. The Center for Brain focuses on helping people with neurological problems using neurofeedback. So basically, they just use um, a helmet with wires attached to retrain the, the, the neurons to work better together. Um, as I listened further, I found that my peer had um, been cured of his problems with insomnia, with insomnia, um, using this, this technique. Yet this seeming miracle is only one way in which neuroscience is important in the 21st century. And today we will talk about how neuroscience is relevant in the 21st century by looking first at the physical brain, second at the insights at the insights psychology has to offer, and third at how neuroscience is practiced in everyday life. So we will begin by understanding the by understanding the brain as a physical organ. Um, studying the brain has significance because it allows us to break down questions of brain function. Um, according to an article in Nature, in, on, published on 20, July 24th, 2019, titled Decoding the Neuroscience of Consciousness, um, a 2017 sleep study revealed that the cerebral cortex is important in consciousness. Um, consciousness itself is a really big um, question in science because it's called the hard problem. It's just, it, it's a, a huge mystery for scientists. Um, and this, this sleep study revealed a little bit about it. What was done in the sleep study was um, people were awoken at random times of the night and the people who had reported dreaming before they were awoken um, had had more cerebral cortex activity. So that's, this is one example of how um, the, the brain itself is, is relevant for a relevant subject of study. The anatomy of the brain also explains certain phenomena in the 21st century. Um, for example, in an article titled Anatomy of the Brain um, in the American Association of Neurological Surgeons, undated, uh, the left hemisphere of the brain controls uh, language, while the right hemisphere controls visuospatial processing. So the left hemisphere would be involved when I write something down for homework, and the right hemisphere would be used when I pull the string of a bow, for example. Uh, the left hemisphere of the brain um, is especially important when you consider two neurological uh, disorders, uh, Broca's aphasia and Wernicke's aphasia, because they both involve damage to this, this part of the brain. Uh, Broca's aphasia is when damage is done to the frontal lobe of the left hemisphere, and when this happens, people have difficulty producing um, words when they speak. So, for example, um, in high school, I watched a documentary on... Um, on this topic, and the person with Broca's aphasia was only able to produce the words tono, tono, tono for the most part. Um, that, that was just the, the majority of his, his speech. It could also count, but only up to like the number five or so. Um, so it's just, they know what they want to say, but they have difficulty expressing it. Um, Wernicke's aphasia, on the other hand, is when um, damage is done to the left temporal lobe, of the brain, um, and this condition has people um, face hardship um, in in making meaningful sentences. So they can express themselves fine, but it's just the the words that come out are are put together in a way that makes no sense. They can say normal words um, sometimes, but it just it comes out in what's known as known as a word salad. It just doesn't make any sense. So for both of these examples, um, it's just understanding how specific parts of the brain are damaged that yields insights into the, into the disorders themselves. Because the language part of the brain is damaged, it makes sense that language is impeded. Um, and though these discoveries are interesting, um, the, the, in the insights offered by psychology are, are even more interesting. So it is to this that our attention will now turn. Psychology's insights have a wide range of applicability. Um, one example of this is false memories, because they, they show the shortcomings of the mind. According to an article in the Association for Psychological Science titled What We Know Now, How Psychological Science Has Changed Over a Quarter Century, published uh, October 31st, 2013, the psychologist Elizabeth Loftus found that memories are easy to distort. Uh, they could be planted in people's minds using only the power of suggestion. So, for example, there was a, a video... Um, that people were shown of a car crash, and if they were told that it was a, a smash, that the car smashed together, 
um, they rated the severity of the car crash higher. Um, eyewitness testimony is also an example of this um, because you can you can have your memories um, distorted and that therefore your testimony can be um, discredited. Uh, implicit bias is also another important um, in insight offered by psychology. It's basically the idea that um, everyone has biases towards other groups of people, be it the overweight or people of a different race or people of a different gender. And um, pe some people at Harvard, some scientists at Harvard developed a test called the, IA the IAT tests um, that measures how much bias you have. And this, this test is very important for making more equitable communities and workplaces. Uh, behavioral epigenetics, as a final example of psychology, is also important. It's the idea that uh, the environment can drive changes in, in, the, gen in the genes of an individual. Um, so, for example, the hippocampus region is um, modified in, in children who have been abused by adults. Uh, researchers say that um, continuing to understand epigenetics will help them understand um, how inequality um, persists because they will be able to understand um, the, the, the environments, the deprived environments impact on the mind. Uh, plenty of other solutions are being put into place um, by practitioners of neuroscience and it is to this that I will now turn attention. Uh, neuroscience as a practice is finding innovative ways to explore neurological issues. Um, some technological innovations of this um, ex involve the so-called hallucination machine, which is um, a virtual reality program used to mimic hallucinatory experiences. Um, experienced by those with schizophrenia, schizophrenia for example. Um, this is according to an article in Science Daily published March 27, 2019, uh, titled Considered Non-Surgical Brain Simulation for Severe Depression. Say experts' finding, findings provide further clarification about the benefits of non-surgical brain simulation. Um, uh, another Another um, example of neuroscience's relevance is that uh, depressed people, uh, according to the, the previous um, source, um, can benefit from electrical stimulation actually as a form of treatment. Um, it has shown has been shown to reduce the symptoms of major depression. So that's a very important um, way that neuroscience has provided insight in, in modern times. Um, Another, another way neuroscience is relevant as a practice is that uh, it, there are many jobs that it can provide that are relevant. Um, according to an article in STEM Jobs on January 16th, 2018, titled Five Cool Neuroscience Careers That Will Blow Your Mind, um, genetic counselors is one example of a career, and they basically um, identify the source of genetic conditions, and they can weigh the risks of certain neurological disorders, which is helpful if you want to start a family, because you can know what you're passing on to your children. Um, other examples are cognitive neuroscientists, which are researchers, and speech-language pathologists, which would just help people um, basically express themselves better um, if for those with speech disorders. Um, all in all, um, neuroscience is a crucial part of the world today. Um, it is only a recent field. It's only emerged in the last century and a half, so it's going to continue to have um, a, 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 prog a progressive um, boom in, in science, and it's just something that people are going to have to keep in mind, pun intended.